Hello everyone, uh, Jim Hannon here from Moonscapes. Uh, I've been doing quite a few videos lately on my gold trips with my son up to Vermont. Um, and we do have a lot of fun, and it's a blast. Uh, but uh, I wanted to get something up back on the moon again. And since uh, I mentioned a while back that I was trying to set up a, uh, a permanent pier, I, I live now in retirement housing, so I no longer have an observatory. So I have to cart all my equipment out, and it makes it kind of tough to set up all the time. Um, but I am in the process of doing that, and hopefully in the next few weeks that will be done. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you this video on something that's very useful for anybody that's interested in the moon. And it's called a Virtual Moon Atlas 6.0. It's a free download, and it's a great atlas of the moon for somebody who wants to study the moon, um, whether you have a, a no instrument, whether you have a pair of binoculars, or if you have a, a telescope, be it a small telescope or large. This is a great program. And once you download it, and you click on the icon on your um, desktop, and this will come up. And there's other things here that you can, these items here that you can check. There's different things here. You can go into those in a tutorial over here. But um, to get into the atlas, you click on this image of the moon here. And it will bring up as soon as it loads. And I don't know why is this in the way. I've got to get rid of this. Um, bring that down there. Um, it brings up the moon. Now, first things first, um, it's, notice it's showing it full, and that is the phase of the moon tonight. And the way that works is make sure that your computer over here is uh, set to the correct date and time. Um, and then this program will read off your computer and show you the moon the way it will view tonight for you. Uh, if you use a naked eye, uh, binoculars, or a telescope. And what's neat about this is you can enlarge. There's, there's items across the top here, um, uh, different things um, where you can show labels and, and take the labels off. Um, there's different things up in here that you can go in and, and check. But the main ones are you can reverse the moon. Uh, right now it's south, up, north, down. And that is the way it looks in a reflecting telescope. Um, if you have a, re uh, a different telescope, maybe a refractor, or you're not using a diagonal, and it's, uh, or you're using a diagonal, you can hit this button here and reverse north and south. There you see the southern part of the highlands now are down to the bottom. North is up on top. And we'll put this back because this is the way I normally view it. And you can re reverse east and watch. Watch Mare Chrism here, this circular uh, feature there. And we hit that button. And now Miracrism is over here. Uh, so you can set this up any way that your telescope um, is viewing the moon uh, if you're using a telescope. Now what's nice about this is you can enlarge this image and uh, just use the wheel uh, on your mouse and you can enlarge the image like this. And there's all kinds of things over here. Uh, let me see. It's not quite in the view so i got to show you. Uh, over here, and I don't know how well you're going to see it, but over here there are, there's information notes, ephemeris, terminator, tools. I mean, you can go in and check all these, but mainly the thing is if you want just information, uh, leave it on information, and let's go check, um, let's see, let's check, we'll pick uh, right here, this crater, this is Copernicus, and let's enlarge it. This crater right here um, is Copernicus, and we click on it, and there, it'll give us the name Copernicus. Uh, I hope you can see this, I'm not sure. But what's nice about that is then over here, in this information, and you're probably not going to see it because it's very washed out, but it gives you all kinds of information. It gives you uh, 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 the type of crater it is and uh, geological period that was formed 1.1 billion years ago. It gives you the size in both um, kilometers and uh, miles. In fact, Copernicus is uh, roughly 56 by 56 miles. It uh, gives you the height of uh, uh, 11,400 feet, and that would include the, the, you know, the walls and the center, which has a central peak. Um, and description, all kinds of information. So it's a great tool for that. Now, like I was saying, let's this is back out of the way, because this is the way the moon looks tonight. And one thing I want to say is, notice that th this program is showing craters, the way you would see them uh, when you look through a telescope. But if you observe the moon on a night like night, a full moon, 
Um, these craters are not going to be visible like this in a telescope. The reason for that is because at full moon the sun is directly overhead. A lot of newcomers to the hobby think that uh, uh, full moon is the best time to observe. No, it's not because the sun is directly overhead, no shadows, and these everything just blends into the background, very pure white. Um, and what you will see is, um, let, me, uh, let me see if I can get, I'd like to get the, uh, no, it's going to, I don't know if you can see my mouse. It's probably blending in. Um, but you can see the ray patterns uh, that you would see in, on the moon. You would see, in fact, you can see it here coming off. This is the crater Tycho, um, one of the centers of one of the largest ray systems on the moon. You can see that come down here, and you can see it going over here. I'll use my finger because I don't think you're going to see my pointer on here. Um, so full moon is a great time to study the ray patterns. And a be another beautiful ray pattern is the crater we just looked at, Copernicus, and you notice all this rayed features out here. Um, and there's other ones. Um, and the reason for these rays patterns, in, in fact, it was a mystery up until probably the later 50s and very early 60s, and uh, because there was a debate as whether these craters were volcanic or um, uh, meteoric impacts. And of course, they turned out to be impacts. And, and what they are is splash patterns, um, just like throwing a rock into a, a mud. Uh, uh, real loose mud and it, it, it'll spray the material out and it'll fall down on the surface and it'll leave that type of pattern. Um, interesting, you can tell the type, like Copernicus you can tell was a, a higher impact because you got ray structure all around it. Uh, same with Tycho up here, oh, let's bring that back down. Same with Tycho, you can see it hit here and the ray patterns here and here and there's some up over the back too. But very interesting is uh, the low impact uh, impactors and what they do. And let's take a look at an example of that. Over here near Mericrissum is the uh, crater Proculus, which is right here. Uh, notice the ray pattern goes here. It doesn't show up well here, but it also goes here. And the ray structure goes out here on the floor of Mericrissum. The reason for that is the impactor came this way and hit a very, very shallow angle, causing the spray pattern to go out this way and causing what is called the zone of avoidance. And that is because of the low angle of impact um, and the spray going to a little bit to the side and mostly forward, but nothing in the back because it came in at such a sharp angle. Now, a lot of people say, well, how comes all the craters are round if there's a shallow impact? Even shallow impacts are going to create um, round craters. That's just the physics of it. It takes a very, very shallow, just a, maybe only just a couple of degrees angle to cause an elongated crater. Almost every crater with a an angle higher than 10 degrees or so of impact um, is going to create a round crater. Now, what's nice about this program is, like I was saying, is look at the moon now. We're looking at it in the full face, the way it would be tonight. And what's nice is over here, you could go, and again, you're probably not going to see this, um, but you can go over here to Ephemeris, and you, in here is the date. Today is, uh, actually, today is uh, July 16, 2019, and exactly 50 years ago today, Apollo 11 lifted off at Cape Kennedy at 9.32 a.m. in the morning um, and started out on its journey to the moon. So kind of a historic day. But anyway, you can go over here to Ephemeris and change those dates to anything you want. Now, let's go to when I generally like to observe at quarter phase. The next quarter phase is going to be roughly um, August, so we'll change that to 8 for August and change this one from 16 to about uh, August 4th, I believe it is. This is probably the next quarter moon. And we set that at August 4th. So now it's set for August 4th, 2019. You go down here and hit Compute, and bingo. Okay, it's not even quarter. There's how the moon will look on August the 4th at this time of night. Notice um, it's showing just the thin crescent. Here's Mericrissum, and of course we can enlarge everything and look at the detail of the craters. Um, for instance, there's Picard in the center here, and there's that crater Proculus that created that ray structure out here on the floor and back here. That is Picard right there. Um, and if you see something that you are interested in and it's not marked, like say this crater right here, which is not marked, if you put your cursor on it and click on it, and it, and it appears. It'll give you the name, and of course you can go to information up there and get all the information in that crater. Now, let's, let's move the date ahead a little bit, because I like to observe, like, uh, like I say, around quarter moon is probably the best time, so let's move ahead four days. Let's go to 
August 8th and compute it. And there you go. There's the moon just a little bit past first quarter. Um, and that's the way it'll appear on August 8th at this time of the evening, which is uh, uh, right now it's, it's just uh, 7.45, quarter to 8 in the evening, uh, rather early. And, and of course you can enlarge it, and there you go. Look at, look at the detail we're looking at on the surface of the moon. Uh, I'm hoping my camera's going to be picking this up and I can show you on the uh, uh, computer. You can see it on the computer. But uh, just look at the detail. Um, now, remember, this is called the Terminator. It's the sunrise, sunset, line, and line. In fact, the first quarter, it's the sunrise um, area of the moon. Over here, the sun angle is going to be very high, and as well as these craters are shown on the map, they will kind of blend in and white out uh, as the sun angle gets high over there. But this strip right here, from about here to here, right down along the Terminator and over about this part, will show a tremendous amount of detail. Um, and again, it, depending on your telescope, you can go up here, you can flip, uh, you can flip north and south. There you go. Um, now the north is actually up north. This is the north pole of the moon up here, the south being down there. Uh, you can reverse east and west like this. Um, so y you can s view it any way you want. Set it up the way your telescope um, shows the moon. Generally, this is uh, the view I get. And here, here's a beautiful view of uh, the crater Archimedes, Aristillus, and Autolacars uh, over here. And up here is the Apennine mountain range. Um, and in fact, Apollo 15 landed up in here, right along the uh, Hadley Rill, which you can go in and find in here also. Um, and of course, Mare Tranquility is over here now in the, uh, not in sunlight yet. But anyway, I just wanted to show you this program. It's a great program. It's a free download. If you're interested in the moon and have, no have, don't have, even have a, any instrument to study it, this is a great program to go in and, and look at the details of the moon, get some information on all the craters. Um, and if you have binoculars, or better yet, a, a small telescope or a large telescope, um, and are just getting started out, it's a great map to have at the telescope. Um, and you can, in fact, if you've watched some of my Moonscape videos, you've probably heard me fumble around a little bit sometimes because I'm running two computers. I run one that runs the camera that takes the live images of the moon, uh, and then I run this program alongside. And if I find something and I don't know the name of it, I'll go in and, and click on it, uh, get the name of it, and go over here for information. And um, here I just clicked on the crater Werner, which is right here. Um, and then over on this side, there'll be all kinds of information on the craters. Uh, so anyway, um, I just thought this might be of interest to some of you who aren't aware of this. Again, it is a virtual moon atlas. This is a version 6.0. Just search it. It's a free download. Uh, it's a very intuitive and easy program to use. And I, I think it'd be very helpful for those who are really interested in the moon. So until I can get out there again, this uh, really hot, sticky weather we're about to go here. I'm in Connecticut, and it's supposed to get up near 100 uh, uh, day after tomorrow for a stretch, and that's just beyond it for me. Uh, my, uh, I, I've developed uh, severe allergy and, and cough uh, this year, which I've never had before, um, and this kind of weather just really sets it off. So until I can get out there again and do some live stuff, I um, hope you enjoyed this, and um, I hope it's very useful for you. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.